Hello, I'm Aiko, and I specialize in posting movie reviews. I'll be sharing a lot of movie reviews, oh, everyone, please subscribe to the channel. In this review, I will talk about the story without spoilers up to the middle. If you are concerned about the second half, please watch the movie and then listen to my story. This time we will be focusing on Oppenheimer, which won Best Picture at the 2024 Academy Awards. The director is Christopher Nolan. The cast includes Killian Murphy as the main character, Oppenheimer. The cast also includes Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Josh Hartnett, Casey Affleck, Rami Malek, and Kenneth Branagh. The story goes something like this. In the 1920s, Oppenheimer studied at prestigious universities such as Harvard and Cambridge, and then studied abroad at the University of Göttingen in Germany, where he began to pursue a career in theoretical physics. After receiving his PhD, he returned to the United States and taught at the University of California, Berkeley, where he became the leader of the Manhattan Project, which was launched by the U.S. military, which was frustrated by the fact that it was lagging behind in the development of the atomic bomb. Will be nominated, Oppenheimer chose Los Alamos, New Mexico, as the base for the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer gathered all the key researchers, took his family with him, and headed to Los Alamos to begin developing the atomic bomb in earnest. The story unfolds between the pre-war and post-war timelines, and depicts the aftermath of the development of the atomic bomb through the perspective of one man, Oppenheimer. This is the story. It is a well-known fact that atomic bombs were actually created and used, so the movie moves forward with the understanding that the viewer knows this. This movie depicts the character Oppenheimer. I think that what director Christopher Nolan wanted to express through this character was the threat of nuclear weapons, basically, the story progresses in Oppenheimer's first person. Although he is a genius, he was a failure during his school days and his life does not seem to be progressing well. However, his talent was noticed and he was appointed as the leader of the important atomic bomb development. Oppenheimer's suffering is depicted here and there. The same is true, of course, for the development of the atomic bomb. I think the viewers will feel anxious about the development and even possession of nuclear weapons from the way Oppenheimer is suffering. I felt that this film contained the hope that if more people had this fear, they might be able to stop having nuclear weapons. Regarding the significance of making this film, it was the intention of director Nolan and other producers to preserve the history of the creation of the atomic bomb, which changed the world, in the form of a feature film like this. It might be, although this was already about 80 years ago, nuclear weapons still pose a threat to peace. I think the message of the movie Oppenheimer was to make this history widely known and to make people aware of the horror of nuclear weapons through the entertainment of movies. I think this is why it was selected for Best Picture at the Academy Awards because it has both a message and artistic quality. However, this movie is not very simple. I think many people have heard mixed reviews before seeing this movie. The most common comment I heard was, it's hard to understand because it goes back and forth between the past and the present, I would like people who are about to watch it to be careful, but I don't think it will be too confusing if you understand the rules for passing time in the first 10 minutes or so. The timeline is Oppenheimer himself talking about the Manhattan Project from his student days. The other thing is about Oppenheimer after the war, which other companies talk about. Some parts may be in black and white, but if you remember that these two time axes go back and forth, I think you'll be able to watch them fairly easily from then on. However, towards the end, the problem of too many names occurs. To be honest, I didn't need to remember this person's name, I just needed to know who it was, as for why it was edited this way, I would like to talk about it later, with spoilers for the second half. Also, if you read about the Red Scare, which became a big issue in post-war America, on Wikipedia, you won't be left behind in the flow of the movie. I felt that young people should see this movie. I think many people will be able to understand just how powerful the atomic bomb is by watching this movie. Of course, Japanese films made immediately after the war, such as Kanido Shindo's Children of the Atomic Bomb and Hideo Sekikawa's Hiroshima, also depict the tragedy of the atomic bomb, and should be seen by people all over the world. I think it's a movie, but you have to be prepared for the expression to be direct. 
The atomic bomb scene also appears in the animated film in this corner of the world. I thought it would be great if this kind of film would get more attention in the wake of Oppenheimer. I would like to express this movie in terms of scores. 90 points. The downside was that it was a bit long, at 3 hours. I would have liked it to be about 2 and a half hours. Now, from here on out, there will be spoilers. If you haven't seen this movie yet, please subscribe and like the channel, then close your browser or app. To everyone who saw this movie, it was a great movie. Preliminary reviews were mixed, but I felt it was a great movie. What attracted a lot of attention was the editing of this movie. I've seen many opinions on social media about why time passes from one place to another. I would like to think about this, first of all. I think everyone knows that it is impossible to depict a person's life in detail. Therefore, I felt that the passage of time was well expressed by going back and forth between the past and the present, furthermore, since it is a well-known fact that the development of the atomic bomb was successful and that it was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we wanted to heighten the tension leading up to the success of the development of the atomic bomb and express this in the editing. I think it was. The viewer knows what kind of effect it will have. But developers aren't sure about its power. However, due to the relationship with Russia, there is a sense of tension that development must be done quickly and that it must be a success. In the midst of all this, we have been discussing how it could become a truly terrifying weapon, but in the end we are in a hurry to complete it. Because we all know how threatening nuclear weapons are, I thought that this kind of editing was able to portray the tension during their development. The movie also spent a considerable amount of time expressing the threat of hydrogen bombs, although not depicted in the movie. On March 1, 1954, the United States conducted a hydrogen bomb test at Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands in the South Pacific. This test was said to be 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. 23 crew members of the Japanese deep-sea tuna fishing vessel Daigo Fukuryu Maru, which was operating on the high seas, have been exposed to radiation. Knowing this history, I think you can understand why Oppenheimer was so opposed to the hydrogen bomb. I felt that the underlying theme was national anthem and power. Even though Oppenheimer created the atomic bomb, in the end he seems to have been made disposable, and because he touched on communism, he gets criticized a lot. Of course, the country continued to build and possess nuclear bombs even after that. In short, once you know how to make a nuclear bomb, you don't need a developer. I thought this was depicted in the scene at the end where he receives a medal, I had one big question. That is, the screen size changes all the time, the entire movie is shown in VistaVision size, but there are black spots at the top and bottom, making it cinemascope size. What difference did this make? I thought about it again. I thought Oppenheimer's subjectivity, his feelings, and his fluctuations were expressed in VistaVision, and the things he depicted as historical facts were expressed in cinemascope, there were so many changes that I don't know if it's true or not. How about that? Well, what do you think, it was a wonderful piece of work, wasn't it, in Japan, this movie was released very late. The reason for this was that, as there were no scenes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki after the atomic bomb was dropped, the film might not be recognized as the only country in the world to have suffered an atomic bomb. However, since the movie depicts what Oppenheimer himself saw, it would have felt strange if scenes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki appeared in the middle of the movie. However, even in the scene where the power of the atomic bomb is being reported, Oppenheimer is only shown looking away, making us wonder how his skin actually got sore, and how he was charred to death instantly. The video does not show how a living human being was destroyed. Personally, I thought it would have been better, but I felt that it would have been difficult to project this as an American movie. On this channel, we are looking for movies that you would like us to review. Please comment or contact us. I will continue to post movie reviews. Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next work. The show must go on.